This is Military Bottom Line Podcast, episode 51. It was hard, but I knew that it was like being a family and creating a life with him was more important than Mm. continuing my career. Welcome to the Military Bottom Line Podcast, where we learn from veterans and those currently serving how to make the most out of a military contract. We're here to motivate, inspire, and help you leverage your service to positively impact you professionally, personally, and financially during your military career and beyond. Hey guys, thanks again for tuning in this week. Whether you're listening to this on YouTube or on the podcast platforms, I'm super stoked for you guys to be tuning in. And uh, I'm just so grateful for you guys to, you know, return to the show and be be hopefully receiving value from these episodes every week uh, regardless of where you are in your military career or how you're affiliated with the military uh, i'm stoked you're tuning in and would love any feedback and if you're a recurring listener uh, i would really appreciate it if you went on to apple podcasts and left a honest review doesn't even have to be five stars just an honest review if uh if this is your first episode and you say it sucks and you want to listen you want to give a one-star review you know, that's totally fine. Uh, but the more reviews, the better, the more honest reviews, the better. And that helps me um, either develop the show or uh, helps the show get recognized on Apple. So if you guys just take a moment from to do that, I'd really appreciate it. And that would mean the world to me. But without further ado, on this week's episode, we have Courtney Boyer. Courtney Boyer is a military spouse of a commissioned army officer, medical doctor. They've been in the military for 10 years now. They've got three kids, done a deployment. Uh, And so we talk about the military from her spouse perspective, but also from her expertise as a relationship therapist, sex therapist, and somebody who works with high achievers and helping them find satisfaction um, through their, their achievements. So tune in. I hope you guys enjoy. Good afternoon evening courtney how you doing hi jason i'm great how are you good this uh this time zone difference always messes me up speaking across the pond a little bit uh today so that's that's always fun uh you reached out to me after an episode that was posted on linkedin Mm -hmm. and uh you've been a spouse of a army officer for 10 you said 11 years now yeah Mm -hmm. so you uh you've got like significant time in the yes. uh, in the program that you can speak from experience from so yes. i'm looking forward to hearing your story uh, okay. and how it goes along with uh you know the military and what your experience has been like so yeah. kind of catch us up a little bit i know it's been you know 10 years is a long way to go back <laughs> but uh how did you guys end up in the military in the first place yeah so my husband um applied for medical school and um ended up getting in and there was an army recruiter that was at the school and doing, I don't know if he did a presentation or if he had a booth or something, but um, my husband's grandfather, who was alive until last year, had served in World War II and was very involved still with like the choir from when they were, when he was in the army and was injured in World War II at the Battle of the Bulge. And so he grew up um, just really admiring his grandpa and in his service. And so then when he saw, I guess, this army recruiter and um, was just kind of like drawn in by him and came home one day and was like, what if I joined the, the army? And I was like, <laughs> What? I'm sorry, what? Like it had never, we'd been married for over, I think a year and a half at that point. And wow. um, I, I, I knew I had signed up for med school, right? Had, he, his dream of being a doctor, I was all on board with that, but that definitely threw a loop. And um, so I said, okay, like if this is what you desire, like, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. So he, he enlisted and um, did the HPSP scholarship. So that's oh. where the military pays for your uh, professional school. And um, yeah, so that's how we got in. No kidding. So this is, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, commitment to ride through medical school and residency is like one thing, but right. then, <laughs> you know, <laughs> then the military, you know, full time yeah. for, you know, I mean, this, the original contract is like six years or something like that, right? Yeah, so it's four. four um, years, okay. But when you do a fellowship, that adds one and a half years. Okay. So he did a fellowship because he's a specialist. And mm-hmm. so then um, technically we are out next summer. We put in for an extension to stay here longer in Europe. And we're waiting to hear back on that. 
So. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you <laughs> haven't fully committed to making a long term thing. So you're kind of still in the first contract. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Years later. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> what a yeah. ride. What a mm-hmm. ride. Uh, how has that, how, how has it been for you? I mean, like from your perspective, obviously you've moved now uh, to Europe, which is like mm-hmm. maybe, maybe not what you expected, but mm-hmm. um when you tell when you guys like agreed to this and like this sounds great let's do it financially obviously it sounds like a great deal mm-hmm. um but how has it been for you guys like as far as life goes um you know it's been really weird is kind of the, the best word that i can do, use to describe it um like i grew up in the same house in the same school district mm-hmm. like i knew everybody k through you know whatever and I don't remember the last time I've lived somewhere longer than three years in the last, you know, I don't know, 15 years. Um, So it's definitely so different than how I grew up. Um, But it's been incredible. Like I love meeting different people. I love experiencing different cultures. I love learning about what drew people into serving their country. Um, so it has been a, just an incredible experience. It's not always easy and it's definitely frustrating. We survived our first deployment this last uh, year during during a global pandemic. So oh, I feel wow. like... What, what a time to go through yeah, that. Yeah, right? <laughs> and living you know, internationally. So yeah. like no family could come help. And it was definitely a lot. Wow. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. No kidding. So, mm-hmm. and you have three kids, you said, right? Yeah. So they, they know, they only know... They life. only know this life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How, how do they feel about the potential transition out? Um, I think right now it's, we still haven't kind of decided what we're going to do. Um, m- military medicine is kind of a weird um, mix. His specialty is desired. So they want to keep him, but at the okay. same time, like, are they willing to like, you know, negotiate and be like, Oh, we want to, Send because we can only go to so many spots because um, we're army. Specialty, if you don't mind me asking, oh, he's a pulmonary critical care physician. Okay, so he does lungs and ICU. Yeah. So COVID, you know. Yeah, <laughs> keeping them busy. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What What kind of from your perspective? I mean, like when you guys were initially talking about this and going, you know, signing this contract that is <laughs> ten plus years. Uh, what kinds of things did you guys like discuss and like? How did you come to this decision that 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 this was the best decision forward for you guys? Yeah, so I think one we make decisions pretty like big decisions like really well. Mm. Um, like I'm a, I'm a instinct kind of gal, so like I'm like okay, let's let's do it. Like we've bought several houses sight unseen. Wow. Um, this kind of I mean yeah. because you know you have to, and sometimes yeah. like. I can't get it. Like, I remember when we were in, we were moving from Washington to Texas. I was eight months pregnant. I couldn't fly down to go look at houses. And so then, and my husband was on, in residency, so he couldn't take time off to go look. So we were like, oh, let's, you know, just, okay, that one looks good. Like, wow. well, have a video, you know, or whatever. So, yeah, um, yeah it is. Yeah, very bold. So, I, I mean, I think just trusting the, in, in, in our faith too, like, hey, like, we know that God can use us wherever and believing that um, we'll make the best wherever we end up. And um, so, th- so that's really what we did, you know, just like, okay, let's do it. Like what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, you know, that's, that's uh, I asked that question a lot and it's like, there's a, there's a sense of optimism in that question. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think, I think if you continue to ask that question, then you're very fortunate to not have experienced the worst that could happen, you know? <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Mm -hmm. what did you have kind of painted in your head as for expectations or did you just kind of go in with a blank? That's a great question. Um, so my first kind of experience was in med school was very limited because there was only a couple of people in his class that did the scholarship. Mm -hmm. So we didn't, we weren't immersed in the military community the first three years that he was a special reserve. He did OBC and, but I wasn't around for that. So he went down to San Antonio, which is, you know, like military, you know, central. And, um, I didn't, I didn't get to have that experience. So our first real community was moving to, um, Madigan, which is at a joint base Lewis McCord. And it was just so 
I don't know, uniform is the first thing that comes to mind. Like everyone looks the same and everyone, you know, like, um, and just like the formalities and the, you know, like, Oh, well, he's, this is his rank. And I was trying to slowly learn that, you know, during, during the years, but it was, I didn't know a lot of the rules. Like I was looking for different like groups to be a part of and like, Oh yeah, I'm in the military community. And I remember the first time I found a, a group, it was, a um, a certain you know group of people and they were bashing on their the doctors and their the hospital and I was like oh this probably this isn't the group for me um, so, <laughs> yeah 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 so yeah, it, it can it get was, a little clicky just like anywhere else really yes yeah. yeah and you know just trying to kind of find your your people and mm-hmm. where you fit in and um yeah it's been it's also kind of like feeling weird too. Cause you're, because we're medical, we're kind of like this outside, like not quote real army, yeah. and, you know? And so <laughs> then like, where are you on the officer side, but then you're on the medical side, which is like even further, you know, right. Like further off. you guys count really do you count? Like, I swear my <laughs> husband does things, you know, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's funny. I, I have a, a friend that did the HPSP with the Navy. And so oh. I did a, a episode with him a while back and it sounds like, like when you sign the contract initially, but you're still in medical school, it's kind of like you have all the good of the military. Like they're paying for your school, you mm-hmm. know, they're giving you that stipend without any of the bad, you know? So like, yeah. Oh, yeah. you kind of had three, th- four years, whatever it was of mm-hmm. being like, this is great. Medical school is paid for. Um, okay. But then all of a sudden, like it gets real, real, real mm-hmm. fast. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Was that difficult? Was that a difficult transition? Yeah. I mean, it's weird because so at the end of in March of your fourth year of medical school, you um, have what's called match day. And that's where everyone finds out where they're going to to residency. And so it's kind of like when you rush, like you, everybody kind of puts into a different system in like college, you know, frats and sororities. And so most people, that's the day they find out where they're going to spend the next three to seven years of their life. And so um it it kind of felt feels like that with the military, like all every year, you know, you're like, okay, so where are we, you know, where are we going this year guys? And yeah. you know, you can't, you, you tell your consultant or whoever like HRC, yeah, this is where we want to go. Or like, Oh, our kids are this age. And you know, you pray that they listen. And then yeah. you're like, what's the envelope say? And um, yeah. yeah, so it's definitely like go with the flow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You only have, you only have so much say, so you have to be, you have to be pretty open to uh, getting what you don't want. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. it's kind of setting yourself up for uh, for a failure. That. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, so, how has it been for you? So, you you're kind of doing your own consulting, uh, coaching stuff within relationships and things like that. So, talk a little bit about about that and how how it's been for you to kind of run your own career when yeah. your husband's mm-hmm. career is what kind of determines where and when you guys leave. Yeah. So when we, when he was in residency, um, I was working as a mental health and sex therapist and had my own practice. I was, I had a teaching job at one of the universities and, um, was doing really well in my career. We were about to have our third kiddo and, um, my husband had applied for fellowship to be a pulmonary critical care uh, doctor. And he didn't think he was going to get it. And we thought we were going to have to go to Alaska. He was like, I think I may deploy or they're going to send me to Alaska. And I was like, okay, so I have to walk away from all of this, you know, and um, that I worked really hard to build and was like, yeah, I mean, okay, you had, like, you had like a physical location, like, yeah, had, like yeah. A practice. Brick and and mortar. Yeah, yeah. This is before like online stuff was popular and wow. a lot of um, it was kind of almost unethical to do it virtually at that Mm. point, because it just, it was like 2011, 12. So yeah, yeah, the laws hadn't caught up to it. Um, and so he found out he got into resident or I'm sorry, fellowship. And so I was like, okay, so I, you know, gave notice and told my clients that I'm, you know, I'm going to have, we're going to have to transition out in about six months. Mm. And, um, it was hard, but I knew that, it was like being a family and creating a life with him was more important than Mm. continuing my career. And that was a conscious choice that I made. I know that not, uh, we actually had a couple friend in residency where she had a great job at Google or Amazon and he finished and was going to get deployed. And she was like, 
I don't want the military life. And so they wow. ended up getting divorced. Yeah. yeah that's tough. Um, it's a, it's an interesting combination. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> the, the combination of mental health and sex therapy, like, mm-hmm. It's an, I don't know anything about anything in right. that realm of the world. So explain to me, like, where do those intersect, I guess? Yeah. So mental health is really just um, about understanding your mind and like how you cope. And sometimes when you I like to think of like use the car analogy. So you don't have to take your car in for like an oil change. Yeah. That's kind of like what I would be for some people. I'd be an oil change. Like they started to feel anxious or depressed. Um, there, I would, I used to work with couples, they'd find that they weren't connecting sexually anymore. They weren't communicating anymore. And so they'd have a session with me. And then there were times when you needed your whole transmission or your engine overhauled. Actually, I'm not a car person. I don't know why I continue <laughs> to use analogies, but it's the only thing that I can visually, you know, compare it yeah. to. And, um, and those would be the times where people are like, I don't want to live anymore, or I am so stressed out. I'm so miserable. Or the couple's like, the next phone call we make is the divorce attorney. So how can you help us? So in those respects, I would see kind of a spectrum of people. Um, now I work with a lot of uh, people who are, who are high achievers, high performers, they look great on paper. They've got the career, they've got the spout, you know, like check, check, check all the boxes. Mm -hmm. And yet they're just so unhappy, Mm -hmm. really miserable. And, um, and they want more out of life. They want peace. They want to experience joy. They want actually true happiness and not, you know, this kind of facade that they've been chasing. So I help people, um, deal with, wherever they're at, where they're feeling stuck, where they're feeling overwhelmed, help them to develop coping skills, help them to understand how they can manage their mind in a more effective manner mm-hmm. and in, in improve the relationships in their life. But most importantly, the relationship with them themselves and, and go forward. Um, I happen to specialize in, in sexuality stuff. So I will coach parents on how to talk to their kids about sex or talk about body image issues with my clients, both male and female. Talk yeah. about how can you communicate what your needs and desires are in and outside of the bedroom. To, to help somebody find when somebody's seeking true happiness and you'd be like, oh, like I can help you find that. You know, like that seems, mm-hmm. that seems like a big ask, you know, like how, right. how do you... I mean, you know, depression in the mm-hmm. military is unfortunately a, a very common issue. Yeah. Um, and so, like, where do you direct people when they say, like, yeah, I'm succeeding, I'm getting promoted, like, life looks great on paper, and I, I look like I'm, you know, having a great time, but mm-hmm. deep down, I'm, I'm pretty miserable. I mean, where do you, mm-hmm. where do you, how do you even, like, where do you point people at that point in time? Yeah, well, I point to them, like, within. It's, I help them to see things differently. So a lot of the things that we've been taught about how the mind works, how, so let me give you an example. A lot of times people think that if I get promoted, if I get married, if I have a kid at my next piece, like then I'll be happy Mm -hmm. then, then, then. So they try to create these experiences externally to reflect this happiness, joy, peace, whatever it is. And actually those are just feelings and feelings can be found and created from within. Mm. We just haven't been taught how to do that. And so I teach my clients how to do that, how to react to situations or I'm sorry, to respond to situations instead of reacting, how they can be in charge of their own feelings and, and realize that their worth is not associated to the amounts of zeros in their bank account or mm. how many followers they have or how many promotions or you know medals they have on their chest. Um, it's really about their ability to like see themselves as good enough and worthy and that they have a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, that's definitely something that I like, you know, I can relate to as somebody who like when I was a kid, I, I, I didn't really care about much, you know, I I went to high school. I was like a C student, Uh, Mm -hmm. but something about uh, the Marine Corps in my case uh, made me desire more and so it's always mm-hmm. like i always have to have a goal that i pursue yeah and without yeah. having like that you know distant um goal that i'm going after it's like well what now you know so i'm always yeah. like if i don't have one i have to make one um mm. and so i think over the last you know year covid's kind of just like reset everybody and realizing that um 
like just kind of slow down and like focus on like the moment or whatever I'm doing at this time and the things to be yeah. grateful for. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's definitely a practice of, you know, I've in no way perfected it by any means, <laughs> but definitely a practice of um, patience and like, I don't know, thoughtfulness. So I guess like, I mean, what are, you know, not, I don't know if you came prepared for like three things that somebody can do to kind of like, <laughs> that can, that maybe they're struggling with this and thinking like, okay, I have to get to my next rank or my next duty station or my next whatever in life, uh, in order to feel achieved and happy. Like, wh- like what are three things to help people or X number of things, whatever, some tips mm-hmm. to help people kind of like take a step back and recognize that, you know, E4, E5, O5, whatever it might be, mm-hmm. is not going to change how I actually feel. Right. Yeah. So I think like one of the questions, and I actually have a, a self-coaching guide that your listeners are totally, it's free. Yeah. Um, I can give you that link if you want to, I don't In know if description. you have description. We'll do it. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> um, and because one of the things that I really pride myself on is the ability to really um, ask the right questions of my clients. Mm. And so, um, and that's what the, the, this, the guide is, it's just several questions. I think it's like five or six questions that you can ask yourself when you're in a situation where you're, you're frustrated or you're, you're anxious or depressed or whatever. <clears throat> so one of the things that I encourage people to do is ask like, what am I trying to prove? Mm. Is this, is this promotion? Is it finally going to prove to my, my parents that I matter? Is it finally going to prove that like, see, I'm smart guys. I, I got this or that like, yeah. that I'm worthy you know, so that's one of the questions on the guide. Um, <clears throat> another thing to think about too is, am I seeing this like as a finite or infinite game? You know, this idea, like, am I playing the short game or the long game? Because a lot of times we approach long game things with a short term mindset. Hmm. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, like thinking that this, there, there's going to be a winner and I, I have to come out on top. And if I don't, then what, you know, that says that I'm a, I'm a bad person as opposed to that my behavior or my achievements weren't enough. And I try to encourage, like, think of, like you're in, this is not a sprint, right? Yeah. Like this is a freaking marathon and remembering that you are on the journey. And so what are the tools and what are the, um, you know, techniques and what are the the essentials that you need to get you from each mile post as you go along, instead of just seeing it as, you know, this short-term tunnel vision. And mm. yes, yeah, sometimes there are short-term stuff like PT tests. Okay. Yeah. Like that's a great example of a short-term. Um, but for overall, like thinking about my health and how I want to honor and treat my body, like that's the long-term game, you mm. know? So just trying to shift perspectives. Yeah. Um, another tip is be grateful, like wherever you are, if you, you know, um, I think about like with my kids and and as they get older and they ask, they're wanting more and they're wanting more responsibility and stuff. And I, and I'm like, I don't want to freaking give you more if you're not even grateful for what I just gave you now. Right. Like God, the universe works this. I think it works the same way. And so if we are not like good stewards and we're not grateful for the things that we have now, Mm. like why in the each double hobby hockey sticks would God or the universe want to give us more when we aren't realizing that what we have is, is a gift and treating mm. that as such. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, I'm curious what, is there a, a common age range that you work with most or that you, that you find is most susceptible to these struggles? Hmm. You mean the, th- the three that I just listed? Well, just in general, like I guess your clients, like, is there a, a common age range that, you know, is it every, is everybody is, has the same problems or like, I'm trying to figure out, I guess, if those that are, have grown up with social media or like the internet and that everything has to be instant kind of thing, or yeah. if it really, if you don't find a correlation to those that grew up with social media versus just have started using sh- social media. Yeah, I say that most of my clients are late 30s, early 40s, mid 40s, um, because they're at that point in their life where they've like, Mm. I I, I, uh, did the corporate thing, right? Like, I I got kind of thing. What? Midlife crisis almost. 
I mean, what, what, what I age mean, range is, mid, is midlife crisis? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I guess, yeah. You know, just kind of like I, I've done all the things. I got yeah. married. I got had the kids. I joined the the board. I got promoted. I'm an 05, you know, whatever. Or I retired from the military and or I'm on that cusp of about to. Right. Like they've done they've they've done their things. And they're like, I thought I'd be happy now. Mm. I thought I'd be where like, when do I get? you know, that feeling of satisfaction. And, you know, it's like this monster that you constantly have to feed. If you are chasing, you know, uh, worthiness and you're chasing that contentment, right. It's never going to be satisfied. You'll always want more. Oh, just, you know, I mean, in anything. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's like a mirage, you know, like you're you're constantly going after and it keeps moving, you know, it's like a, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's definitely difficult. I mean, it's de- it's definitely something that I find myself, you know, like I get, I get really focused on something mm-hmm. and then I I recognize like, well, I'm like, I'm way too deep on this thing, way too focused mm-hmm. on this. And it's clearly just keep go- moving down the line. Um, mm-hmm. So it's something I, I find myself that I have to like draw back and like practice mindfulness and stuff. And I, yeah. growing up, I always thought it was kind of like, I don't like no offense to the hippies if any if any, anyone's listening to this, yeah. but I always kind of thought it was like a hippie or like maybe like a weaker thing to do. Like Absolutely. just keep pushing. And I feel like that's a lot of what the military teaches you is like just push, shut up, keep going. Exactly. Right? Suck it up. Yep. Wait yeah. in line. Yep. Um, and like you, you know, if you you can only push so long and ignore things so long before it becomes a transmission that explodes in your car. Damn, totally yes. <laughs> I was just thinking that. I was like, oh my gosh, she's my <laughs> I had to tie it in somehow, you know. Yes, I love it. it. All works together. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, like those that are professionals in their area, or mm-hmm. like are, you know, whether you be a personal trainer or whatever it might be, or you're teaching somebody else how to do it. Mm-hmm. Do you find that it's easier for you to practice these things, or yeah. more difficult for you to practice these things? No, I def I, I do practice these things, right? I mean, that's the thing. Like I've been there, done that. I've mm-hmm. I've right, I've been up at the top. I've gotten, you know, like by the time I was 30, I had two master's degrees, three kids, and was married to a doctor. Like wow. check, 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 check. You yeah, know, yeah. like yeah. Uh, and I was miserable. I was mm. exhausted. I was burnt out. I was like, is is this really what we're doing, guys? Like this yeah. is this is what we work for. Yeah. Um and so I intentionally have created programs and protocols and utilize, you know, been trained in certain techniques because they're evidence-based because they work because I've used them so I can help people recover or not even get there. Right. Like to prevent them, like don't do it right away. Mm. <laughs> that, you know, this, this misleading, this idea, like this mirage, like you said, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I meditate every day. I work out, I, um, I get massages. I, ha- I have a coach myself. I'm in a mastermind. Like I oh. practice everything that I preach and I, and oh. I am super transparent about that. And, and I will be like, yeah, this is total crap. Or like, oh my gosh, I thought this was so weird. And I say that all the time mm. to my community and my groups and in my emails, I'd be like, okay, guys, this is going to sound really weird, but it, it, really at this point everything that i say is probably pretty weird so <laughs> <laughs> well it's only weird for those that you know haven't given any thought or never heard That's of it right. you know yeah. it, it at some point if you if you do <laughs> if you do weird things long enough it becomes normal uh, totally. <laughs> you know yeah hopefully that that wasn't taken the wrong way um but uh yeah so i, I think that when you kind of break through that thing where it's like meditation to some is like really mm-hmm. weird um, right. But then once you do it for a little bit and you recognize like, okay, like this is actually practical help, and helpful. Um, yeah. And to sound like exercise is weird and sucks. And like, mm-hmm. but we all know that exercise doesn't, it's good for you. Like there's, right. no, I don't think there's any way to deny, to deny that. Um, so yeah, I think like being willing to step outside of your comfort zone to mm-hmm. protect your mental sanity and yep. you know, everything else by your life is, uh, is pretty, pretty critical. Absolutely. Um, so how has that role in your profession developed as you've you're now overseas and you're you're continuously moving like how how are you helping and reaching people um when you're kind of 
I don't want I, I feel really bad. I don't, I don't mean to say in the shadow of your husband's no, career, but like in a sense, it's like <laughs> in a sense, he dictates where you guys he does dictate where you right. guys go. Yeah. Um, so how do you, how are you managing your own career with that dynamic? Yeah. Um, I constantly reevaluate if I want to stay with him. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> At least totally kidding. I love him. He's great. Yeah. Um, no, and, and that's, you know, the thing too, is like, we're very much a partnership. Yeah. And so he knows, like he sees the good and the value that I have in the job that I do. Like he'll have some of my clients that are colleagues of his or, you know, you know, physicians or nurses in other departments. And they'll see like, they'll, Hey, your wife, like she totally changed, changed our marriage. She totally changed our life. And so he sees the benefit in what I do and will absolutely consult with me like, Hey, and we have these conversations actually pretty recently of like, what happens if we don't get that extension? Cause his contract, his, his payback is up next summer. And so, or yeah, a, a year from now in 2022. Yeah. And so we have the choice to say, you know, thanks military. It's been a great 12, 11, whatever years at that point. Um, so then where would we go? And he's very much like, we talk about that because, mm. you know, he, he doesn't want me just to be like a little puppy dog following him around. It's very yeah. much a, a respected partnership. So because though we haven't, like the military has been in control of where we go, moving to a portable occupation and being an entrepreneur has allowed me to move my business and to pivot it and to um, evolve it and change it and really be open to, okay, so that business model is not going to work for me in this duty station. So I'm going to have to change that. And, Mm. you know, being resourceful and being open and being humble enough to be like, I have no idea what I'm doing. So I need to hire somebody or reach out to somebody and really tapping into the wealth of, um, you know, fellow military spouses at my new duty station or the the online community has mm. been just amazing and incredible. So it, it's, it requires you to be creative and, and really causes you to like determine if like, is this really what you want to do? Like, are you really committed to this calling in your life? And, and it's okay if you're not, it's okay if it's just for a season. But for me, like, this is like my passion in like a lifelong vision for, for me and something my husband and even my kids that they're, you know, getting older, they see, um, how, how excited I get and how, uh, you know, wonderful, uh, this opportunity is for me to work with these individuals. And so, they're supportive in, okay, mom's got to work. Mom's got to figure this out. Uh, you know, like mom's got to do a podcast at a nine o'clock at night and, you know, <laughs> sorry, I'm going to tech you guys in and then I'm going to go do that. So yeah. just being flexible. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's an interesting bringing you, bringing it back to the, your kids. Cause I think, um, a lot of like the pressure that we put on ourselves is mm-hmm. a result of how we were raised. And yes. all, all the love to my parents if they're listening. <laughs> uh, You're the best I, mom and dad. We love you. Yeah, I don't blame <laughs> them in the slightest. But how has your profession and the things that you have learned through these years changed the way or affected the way rather that you are currently raising your kids to, to, to yeah. avoid them having these, you know, emotional difficulties later on? Yeah. So one of the things that was really emphasized when I was growing up was like, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? Yeah. (laughs) And I I got asked that all the freaking time. And question. (laughs) Yeah. And so I finally, I decided to stop and not ask my kids that. And and instead I, and I say, who do you want to be when you grow up? Mm. Like, who do you want to be? I'm like, I could care less if you're going to be like your dad and you're going to be a doctor or you're going to be a teacher or whatever. I'm like, are you going to be kind? Are you going to be helpful? Are you going to be compassionate? Are you going to be brave? Are you going to be, um, outgoing or friendly or conscientious. Like those are the things I care about. I could care less how many degrees you have. I could care less what school you go to. Um, I just want you to do your best and I want you to tap into who God's created you to be and, and to show up and, and serve. Mm. Yeah. Well said. Well said. <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, I, everybody gets asked that question. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm-hmm. And I was talking to my pastor actually a couple weeks ago about how like I've it took me I'm a 28 now I've recognized that <laughs> finally at 28 that all these things that I've oh, thought yeah. about <laughs> all these things that I thought about pursuing I it was always like a career that I would be 
something. Mm -hmm. Like I mm -hmm. like originally I wanted to be a doctor. And then I started doing that. I'm like, this is miserable. So props to your husband. <laughs> uh, and then I was like, I want to be a pilot or I want to be like, I just always wanted to be something so I could identify yeah. with my career. Yes. And then I, I, I finally realized that like trying to identify with my career was, was a uh, cause for like, you know, destruction. Like that, it's, it was just miserable, you know, like I didn't, I didn't actually want to be any of these things, you know, I just had to figure out like who I was and just mm -hmm. be okay with that. Um, yeah. and so I think that not asking like, what do you want to be when you grow up <laughs> is, uh, is a good way to like start down that track and, mm -hmm. and prevent that. So that's a good thought. Um, do you, do you, I'm just curious, like this is more personal. Do you homeschool out oh. there? You can ask me anything. Um, so currently right now we're homeschooling because we have to, well, wow. sort of, we're in the hybrid. So when, when we moved here, we told our younger two, you're going to go to German school when you get here. <laughs> and they were in, going into first and third grade and oh, yes. um, they were like, okay, okay, okay. My oldest was a bit more difficult to convince, but we did. We bribed her and also, you know, convinced her. You say bribed her? <laughs> yeah, you may have. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not officially going on the record with that yeah. one, but yeah. so, um, and I get asked that quite like, why did you put your kids in German school? And and my question is why not? Yeah. Like, why not have them like be immersed in a culture where they are the minority and where they are, have no, you know, like they just, have, it's just been a really incredible trying also very difficult, especially with COVID like, they, we had been in the system for about nine months when the first lockdown happened. And um, we went 100% homeschooling. And I was like, I don't speak German, guys. So Dr. Google here, what can we find? And <laughs> yeah. um, it's it's been a lot of improvising. And then my husband deployed and I was doing it by myself. And um, But it, it's something that was important enough to us that we just kept kept going, kept going. So right now my kids go every other day to school and then they do like worksheets on the, on the days that they're home. And they're, they're schooling when they go to school is taught in German or a hundred percent. Yep. It's like a German wow. village school. Yeah. So they're forced to learn German essentially. Otherwise oh, yeah. they're going to fail all their classes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they don't grade them like they do their peers. The okay. first, so my, my younger two are graded now, like, normal Germans and they've been in for a year and a half. So my fluent? oldest, what was that? Are they fluent after a year and a half? Um, I'd say they're pretty close. I mean, they're, I wow. consider them bilingual. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, they, they can converse, they understand there's some things that they don't know how to say, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'm always like, can you, can you just like order for, can you <laughs> <laughs> ask how to do this? Yeah. I mean, what I, an unbelievable advantage for them. You know, to be oh to be forced into that, you know, window that I'm sure they were not excited about at the beginning. And no, my son cried every day on for a month <laughs> when we I put him on the bus to go to to the school, yeah. and I was like, "It's building character. It's building yeah. character." Like you, know, you will thank me in like ten years, maybe exactly. not even. You know, oh my goodness, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, seriously, unreal. So they're handling it at this point. They're handling it pretty well. They're champs. I am so like their resiliency amazes me. Like they are just the freaking um, coolest, amazing kids. And I am so like proud of them for just being so like, mom, are we moving next year? Like, Oh, Hey mom, you know, like for some people that would just ruin their life. Like, Oh my gosh, I can leave everybody. But like, that's not, that's their norm. And, um, you know, like, oh, well, they're moving. Oh, they're PCSing. Um, just people coming and going. It's so common. Do, do you think that, you know, like, I mean, they, they don't know the alternative, but you right. thinking you thinking of what the alternative would have been if your husband didn't join the military and you settled yeah. down in suburbia somewhere and like they just yeah. had a normal, you know, normal childhood or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, are you grateful that they had this childhood over like kind of the, the quote unquote norm? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, it was part of me, like I grew up around my cousins, or, you know, my aunts and uncles. And so that was something that was really special growing up, but they, they don't have that experience, you know, like instead we, like we went to, 
you know, Rome last year and they got to see the Colosseum. You know, so there are things that they get to do that some people that they've done in their short life that people, yeah. their whole lives never get to do. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think either one is right. I think they're both great op- options. And um, I, I met so many spouses who grew up as military kids and they're wonderful, amazing humans. And that makes me feel so much better. <laughs> I'm like, Oh my gosh. Okay. If you can turn out like this, you're yeah. a great person. Yeah. Uh, but really like I do, I want to raise a world citizen. I want to raise somebody who's, who's compassionate and caring about the whole earth and about all citizens and not just this ethnocentric view mm. of like their, their own little neighborhood and people who have the same skin color as them. Yeah. And, you know, and the best way to do that is exposing them um, experientially to that. And so I, I don't regret the choice that we made, um, you know, like, could it have been different? Of course, you know, yeah. but I'm, I'm grateful for this life that we have. Cool. That's awesome. Was, was the initial, like, I'm sure that obviously there's, there's plenty of motives, but was the m- main motive for going this route, HPSP, like the financial, because there's med school paid for, which no. is massive. No. no. So it was like you, like you guys actually like, I mean, like, I guess you're, you said your husband's uh, grandfather was in the military. So there was a piece of that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Hands, I think hands down, it was, was his grandfather. Yep. Cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. How, how are you making the decision? I mean, to, to process out if you're kind of thinking, looking at the next thing, like, yeah, I mean, 10, 10 years is a long time. So <laughs> you've experienced yeah. it, you've done it. Um, how are you guys making that next decision? I'm like, it's been great, yeah. but time for the next thing. Yes. So we go, gosh, it's so tough because he was really set on, okay, I'm going to get out. Like this has been fun. I've appreciated it, but you know, like the politics and Mm. the farther up you, you know, you rank up as an officer, the less patient time that you tend to have, you get more admin and he loves working with his patients. And when he got back from his deployment, he came back and he was like, I love serving these, this, these men and women, this Mm. community of people. It is Mm. such an honor and such a privilege. And I don't know if I'm ready to give that up. And I said, Mm. okay, well, then, then don't give it up yet. And so then we put in for the extension because we kind of feel like we got shafted here being stationed yeah. in Europe and really wanted to have that experience. Um, so we're praying HRC listening. We'll say, yes, you're a great <laughs> doctor. We want to keep you here, sir. Yeah. Um, you're a great family. Uh, so we're hoping that, that if that's the case, then we'll likely stay in the whole you know 20 uh, oh, because wow. that'll put us at like 15 years, I think. So what's another five, five, six, whatever. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But so tech, I mean, a lot of docs will look at it financially. um, What's the benefit? So for us, the cutoff is 14 years. So at 14 years, if you're at 14 or above, it's financially beneficial to stay in the military till you Mm -hmm. retire. If you're under 14, it's financially better to go out and work as a civilian doctor based on your specialty pay. Interesting. So you've done the math out and figure like, okay, with pension, this, that, and the other thing, yes. 14 is the cutoff. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. Yes. For his specialty yeah. uh, right now. So yeah. again, we're like right on that wire thing. Mm-hmm. For us, it's more it's quality of life for the kids. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like my oldest, if we move, one like she she'll be um in in middle school well she's in middle school in germany right now but if we move you know she'll be in eighth grade and then she we'd have to move again so then she'd go to a different like that's a tough age Mm -hmm. to keep moving your kids when they when they're younger it's not that bad i mean you're like okay play dates are the same pretty much parks preschools Mm -hmm. but now we're starting to develop identity and we're starting to have you know these friends and um it's just a little more complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. How yeah. did, how did the family handle his deployment? How long was his deployment? It was seven months. Seven months. I mean, that's a long time to be, you know, mm-hmm. no dad. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like how did you guys <clears throat> prepare for that? And how, like, how did it, how did it go with the kids with, with you and what kind of yeah. advice can um, you give to spouses that are maybe preparing for a, deployment like that. Yeah. So it's, you know, I, I don't know if it's better or worse to have a deployment when your kids are little and they don't really understand or when they're older and they can 
take care of themselves and, um, but they get moody, you know, and like really overwhelmed and crabby. And it was hard because we had family staggered to come and support me so I could take a break since I do work full time and borders were shut. Like we yeah. literally, nobody, nobody could come in. It wasn't safe my, you know, for us to go back to the States because of COVID. Um, I mean, we made that decision as a, you know, my husband and I did. Uh, so it was like, okay, well, we're stuck here. The deployment was only supposed to be like five ish months. So, yeah. you know, I wasn't mentally prepared for that extra two yeah. when, um, you know, some policies got ch- changed and I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, I'm not, I'm not doing with that well today, you know, yeah. so yeah. giving myself, you know, permission to feel and be like, okay, so I'm pretty angry today mm-hmm. and I'm going to sit here with that and I don't want to move on. I don't want to you know, how I coach my clients, like, that's fine. Just sit in your emotions. You don't have to feel anything you don't want to feel. <laughs> so I didn't, but I, it didn't last very long because I don't like feeling that way. I don't like feeling angry. So, um, but with my oldest, especially she had a lot of like anger and disrespect and lots of frustrations. And so just giving her a lot of grace of, mm-hmm. Hey, I miss him too. Like, because she doesn't have, you know, the the cognitive ability to process and really understand, oh, I'm mad because I yeah. miss my dad and I can't get a hold of him and <clears throat> grandma and grandpa can't come. And so just really trying to sit with her in that and just not try to fix it. Yeah. And just provide a safe space. So being the profession I am, I think allowed me to really be a great mom in that instance. Yeah. Um <clears throat> and just tapping into the community around you. So asking other families like, Hey, can my son like do the dad's weekend with you since my husband, like his dad's gone? Yeah, absolutely. He can come camping with us, you know, whatever. So. That makes me think, I mean, I don't don't know if, if you would know, like, is, is there a long-term effect to like a, you know, a deployment on kids? you know, at, mm-hmm. at a certain age, like, is that something that you <clears throat> worry about within your profession or anything like that, or, or personally worried about? I mean, is there any data on it? I have, I, I have no idea. I just thought, kind of yeah, thought that's it. a good question. I think a lot of it depends on how you handle the deployment, you know, especially if there's not a lot of transparency, there's a lot of secrecy. There's not like we had the privilege or thankfully that we could text with him and talk with him a lot. The video was horrible. That's yeah. something that we didn't anticipate. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so we had that communication. I think if you didn't have that, that might be a lot more difficult because it's almost like, and they, they've grown up with him working like, you know, 16 hour days at the hospital. Yeah. So <clears throat> for them, they're like, Oh, dad's gone. Like he won't be here before I go to bed. What's new, you know? <laughs> like yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know the data on the effects of deployments. Um, I see the effects in relationships for sure. And a lot of the, you know, individuals I work with, but like spousal relationships or yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Hmm. What kind of, um, you know, what kind of <clears throat> advice do you give to those couples that are, you know, either preparing for deployment or coming back from the deployment and trying to like make things normal again? Yeah. Communicate, communicate, communicate. That is like, communicate your needs, your spouse, your partner, they're not mind readers. You have to let them know how you're feeling. If you're scared, if you're frustrated, if you're overwhelmed um, and and giving the other person permission to feel that way. I never, well, not never. There was only once or twice that I felt like I was really overwhelmed to the point where I felt like you don't understand And not that it's your fault, but I, you know, like you just get into that space where even with all of my tips and tricks and meditations and stuff, I was like, I want to be mad. I want to be mad. It feels so much better to be mad and frustrated right now. And, and he just listened. He didn't try to fix it. He didn't try to, you know, he just sat there and okay. Yeah. I know it's hard for you. Yeah. I know. And that's all. That's all I want. I wanted to be seen. I wanted to be acknowledged. I wanted to be validated. I didn't want to be fixed. Mm. Mm. Don't so fix that, me. Yeah. So there, that comes with a, a level of, you know, knowing the other individual. Because I feel like communication is like yeah. easier said than done. Of course. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, and so like, 
yeah, it's a, definitely paying attention to the other person. Um, so I think it's easy to like focus inwardly on like how <laughs> we're feeling and just yep. be selfish with that rather than like, you know, like your husband did and kind of like he just stopped and listened. Um, yeah. Well, that's something too, that the, I'm not trying to pr- promote my guide here, but no, I'm no, really proud do. of it. Please do. Um, but that's one of the, the questions is what am I making this mean? So like a, a lot of the times, well, you know, she said she'd call and she didn't. And so then we automatically go to this awful place of like, oh, well, she must hate me or she's mad at me or she's cheating on me or whatever it is. And really it has nothing to do with you 99% of the time. It's, I, my phone died or I dropped my phone or Uh one of the kids stole (laughs) my phone, you know, like there's so, but we love, we're as humans, we're meaning making machines and Mm. we love to make things make mean about us. And so I, I love for clients to act like, what am I making this mean? And why am I making it mean something about me? Mm, yeah. Well said. Well said. That's, that's so funny. <laughs> I, I was, I found myself in that frame of mind, uh, not just, just a little bit ago. So that's funny okay. that you say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I want to make sure that those that are listening, um, mm-hmm. clearly understand like what you do and, and if they have something that like, well, like, is she the right person to reach out to? Yeah. So kind of like just give a little bit of a, another recap of like what you specialize in and mm-hmm. just so if somebody wants to reach out to you absolutely uh, assistance then they can do that yeah so i um i'm a relationship coach and sexuality expert and i help high achievers create um <clears throat> excuse me i help high achievers um create their success in relationships as much as they are in their careers mm-hmm. so we work on their relationship with their self, with their money issues, with their faith, with their family, with their spouse, their kids, whatever. Um, and then I te- coach parents on how to talk to their kids about sexuality. Um, what was your other question? Uh, well, that was it. And then like, where, oh, can, people, where, can, sorry. where can people find you? Yeah. So I'm in kind of the middle of transitioning to. So right now, my website is the Stepping Stones Coach. Dot com. Um, and you can find me on Facebook at the stepping stones coach. And then on Instagram and LinkedIn, it's Courtney Boyer coaching. So awesome. eventually it will all be Courtney, Courtney Boyer coaching. Um, so, and if you go to the, your show page, you can get the free guide and, um, follow me on either one of those social media platforms. And I try to connect and help and serve. Cool. Cool. Well, I'll make sure that regardless of people are watching on YouTube or listening on the podcast platforms, all that information will be in the Oh, thank notes. you. And so they can uh, they can look below the episode and reach out to you. Yay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. I really appreciate you reaching out. I yeah. Like I, thank I can you. talk to you all day, but I'm not about to broadcast my own therapy <laughs> session. So. <laughs> Fine. We can do another one. I do this all the time now. Yeah, right. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Courtney. I really appreciate awesome. it. And hopefully you guys get that extension if that's really what you want and uh, get an opportunity to enjoy Europe a little bit more. Thank you. Yeah, me too. Awesome. Thanks, Courtney. Hey guys, thanks again for tuning into this episode. Really enjoyed that my conversation with Courtney and I hope you guys did too. If you guys think you could uh, get any value from the things that Courtney and I spoke about and her expertise, I would really highly encourage you reaching out to her, just connecting with her on the social media platforms and her website um, because she knows what she's talking about and I think her niche is really unique and, and really important uh, for, you know, anyone who is always pursuing the next thing and pursuing success, uh, but always kind of coming up, uh, internally empty at the end of it. Cause it doesn't always equate to any level of happiness. So I, I think, uh, she's got a, va- a lot of value there and I hope you guys will check her out, but all the links w- to her and her programs are in the description, whether you be listening on the podcast platforms or on YouTube, check out the description. Thanks again. We'll see you guys next week.